Welcome back to the training facility at Bevler USA. Today we're going to go over the instructions on how to operate a UZ30 stationary beveling machine. The capacity of the machine is um, uh, 0.10 inches to 4 inches and the feed rate on the machine is 2 feet to 11 feet per minute. The typical use for this machine is for small parts and uh, production of beveling of small parts. Now we'll go over some of the features of the machine. Starting with the bottom, we have a chip tray to collect chips to keep your uh, workspace clean. We'll open up the machine to see how the cutter head is adjusted. You can rotate the drive assembly out of the way. Lift the table up and we have, now we have access to the cutter head. The cutter head is just mounted directly on the shaft of the motor, can easily be easily replaced. To adjust your angle, the simple lever on the side of the machine can adjust from 30 degrees all the way to 60 degrees and you can see that the motor and the cutter head are now tilted to the appropriate angle. And here we have a set of gauges that comes with the machine. These are used to set the machine to the appropriate angle and uh, bevel that you want to do on your workpiece. You can see we have 60 degree and 30 degree showing here. Uh, there's a number of gauges, they're two-sided. Uh, we've determined that we need to do a 45 degree bevel on this machine. So we will go to the 45 degree gauge. So now we've found our, our gauge for 45 degrees. And if you look on the gauge, the A, which is the height of the bevel, the maximum is 14.1 millimeter. So if you look on the gauge, it's the lines are indicated as two millimeter spacing. So it's two, four, six. This is the maximum, again, the maximum bevel the machine is capable of. So if we're going to do the max bevel on our material, we have to do it in three passes. These lines indicate the first pass, second pass, third pass, and in a moment we'll show how these lines are used to adjust the machine. Um, you're wondering maybe the clip on the, uh, why this clip where this angle is here on the gauge, that again, that just indicates what the maximum bevel is, 14, and what the maximum bevel here. So it's a visual indication. But the important steps are we use these lines to set our maximum steps per pass. Okay, now we'll set our first pass. Uh, we'll adjust the machine uh, to do the first pass on our 45 degree bevel. Now, if you look at the gauge, we have it set on the, um, the flat guide plate, the material uh, plate that the material rides on, and we have the back against the vertical guide plate. You'll notice the gauge here, there's a large zero with, a, with an indicator line. So what we need to do is our first pass maximum is this dotted line. So we need to line up both of those lines and that'll give us our first pass. It's very easy and very simple on this machine to set. You just turn the knob and you can see the vertical fence backs off. And now we've lined up the two lines, the zero line and your first pass mark. Okay, before we get into um, actually doing a bevel on our plate, there's a couple other things that I'd like to go over. Your feed drive or your drive mechanism assembly uh, is factory set. You'll notice that there's a number of uh, handles here that uh, provide for adjustment. Uh, but the machine is factory set and when you take it out of the box, it's ready to run on flat plate, mild steel, just general material. Um, the machine, the, uh, the drive assembly has the ability to be moved away from the fence if you wanted to do angles or channel so you have clearance behind the drive wheel. You also have the ability to adjust the pitch 
of the drive wheel to make sure it holds the material close to the fence as it's driving material through. You also have the ability to uh, um, add a, a pipe accessory that you can bevel pipe and um, the, the uh, drive mechanism would need to be moved um, from left to right or right to left determining on or depending on which application you're using. So those are the, the variables that the drive assembly can be adjusted to. Now we'll go over the controls on the control panel for the machine. We have main switch, we have a power indicator light, we have the second emergency stop just like the one that's on the uh, drive drive assembly. We have the on off switch for the drive assembly and we have an on off switch for the cutter head. For adjusting speed on the cutter head we have a dial indicator here. We recommend from 4500 to 5500 for mild steel and for products like brass or aluminum non-ferrous material we recommend from 1500 to 2500. Um, as you do your applications, you'll get a better feel for uh, the quality of the bevel as you get used to running the machine. Another important point of the machine is the speed, your feed rate, and we'll go over that in a minute. For here we'll turn the machine on and we'll adjust the cutter head speed and you can hear the difference. <laughs> feature of the machine is setting your speed rate for the material feed through the machine. You see on the drive assembly there's a knob here. This is very important that your feed adjustment is only done while the machine is running. That you'll damage the internal components of the variator if you adjust this or turn it while the machine is turned off. You can see the feed wheel is rotating and by turning the wheel you can increase your feed rate for your material through the machine. There is no set adjustment for your feed rate. As you get accustomed to the machine, you'll be able to develop a sense for the sound of the material feeding and the quality of the bevel that you're getting in the, 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 uh, as it comes out of the machine. You may be able to speed up production by increasing your feed rate and still achieving a very quality type bevel. Okay, we have one more adjustment before we do our bevel. We need to adjust the height of our drive wheel to the appropriate distance for the material that we're using. We typically want the drive wheel to be five millimeters lower than what the thickness of the material is. Um, a good indicator or what you need to be aware of is as long as the material can move under the guide plate, your position is going to be pretty close to being correct. If the drive assembly is set too high, it won't engage the material. When it comes to the cutter head, it may stop. It won't give you a positive drive across the face of the cutter head. If your drive wheel is too low, the mechanism is extremely heavy and that also provides weight for a positive drive. But if it's too low, it won't let the material engage into the drive wheel and feed through the machine. So as a rule of thumb, we want to be about five millimeter lower than what the thickness of our material is. You can do that simply by unlocking this lock nut and rotating the big hand screw in the back. Now we're ready for our first pass. We want to make sure that we have the, the material stable as we feed into the drive wheel. We want to secure it in place until it engages the cutter head or a little bit past. You want to make sure that the material is flat against the vertical fence and not flat on the bottom fence.
first pass, and if that's adequate for your application, then we don't need to go any further. If you still need to make the bevel higher um, or a larger bevel, then we need to reset the machine for the second pass. It's important that you never go beyond the uh, dotted line on your passes. Um, so in this case, if we wanted to do the maximum second pass, we would adjust again to 10 millimeter. However, if you want to do eight millimeter, just adjust to the eight millimeter line on your gauge, which is just below 10, and that can be your final pass. So you have, again, three passes to do the maximum bevel. At each pass, the maximum is the dotted line on the gauge. All of the instructions that we've provided you today are also written in the operational manual, uh, maybe a little more detail. Uh, but please refer to that if you have any other questions. Again, my name is Ernie Leopold. I handle technical support and technical sales for Bevler USA. If you have any questions, please give us a call and we can help you with your application. And we hope you enjoy your UZ30. Thank you.